Speaking of your living room, you live in Taiwan now. Um, China is not far away, and with closer economic ties between Taiwan and China, um, do you see the space for free speech narrowing in Taiwan? Has um, it affected you? Yes, absolutely. Uh, China. Uh, let's let's look at Hong, what happened in Hong Kong, and then that will give us a clear answer what's going to happen in Taiwan. Um, China tried to seize control of Hong Kong by purchasing uh, the influence of the of the uh, money loaded elites in Hong Kong. Those elites, uh, when once they call themselves uh, with the a few English letters patching to their names, uh, uh, Knight of British Empire or something, <laughs> KDE or something like that, and then they usually they call their company Royal or something, and then later on, now they decide to change that into patriotic something. They all go to Beijing, and Beijing realized that they can do what the former colonizer have done, and then they can do that in Hong Kong, and they have successfully done that for quite a long time. And by doing that, they have, uh, they have flooded Hong Kong with the looted money. The corruption, corrupted officials of Beijing flooded Hong Kong with looted money. And then they have threatened the intelligentsia and the media and the, the, to conduct the censorship where uh, in absence uh, of the central propaganda uh, ministry in Hong Kong. Uh, they are. Uh, then they have. They have made the house unaffordable for Hong Kong people. The result is that uh, the umbrella revolution. And that Chinese government sees see that as a successful successful model. They are copying that model in Taiwan these days. It is impossible for Hong Chinese government to purchase the mind and heart of um, of Taiwanese people. They have learned that. Uh, but they think they are still being able to purchase the mouse piece in Taiwan. They are trying to, per, they are trying to uh, get uh, uh, the, the pro Beijing business tycoon to come go back to Taiwan and buy uh, by uh, the medias, and then also they try to control the Taiwanese media owners by threatening them of shutting the market, China market. And for instance, I was one of the most uh, celebrated uh, uh, political commentator for a long time. I was one of the highest paid political commentator on TV for years. And then in the last few years, I was denied by most TV stations in Taiwan. And then they, they told me the reason they have to sell their TV dramas in China. And Chinese government would keep clearly tell them don't book Wu Kaixi on your TV talk show. And then that is a direct interference in the freedom of experience, uh, ex express in, in Taiwan, and quite successfully, uh, without Taiwanese people knowing so uh, clearly. With, and then I'm, yeah, I'm, I, it sounds like I'm reporting a personal tragedy uh, to you now, but it is not. I'm telling you, the, the Chinese government have an agenda and then they have their own method to go through the, to accomplish that agenda. They believe it's, they call it historic imperatives. And with, uh, when, when they try to reach that agenda, uh, they will not stop until it is reached. And the Chinese government cannot be negotiated on. Being nice to China does not make China nicer. This is interesting. It's sort of the same strategy they've used with um, Bloomberg and the New York Times and Wall Street Journal yes. controlling, um, controlling the media. With, Chinese uh, also have another tactic, technique is like using the border to control people. They use their border, for instance, uh, they deny issuing passport to my parents, to many ethnic minorities, uh, to have them uh, to, to call them into their submission. They also use visa issuance to control foreign media. If you want to have a Beijing bureau, you need to, you know this better than I do, many of the issue, uh, visa issues were based on the political decisions. Like, uh, so the Chinese government used their own borders 
use their own uh, like visa and passport insurance, holding their own people hostage. Again, I, I feel I'm, this is in, almost insulting to report to you in this room the human rights situation of China. I'm telling you how bad the human rights situation, how bad the Chinese Communist Party is, how bad their, their uh, how primitive, barbaric, brutal the Chinese government have been conducting their oppression. I feel, I feel, keep reporting this to you is an insult to you, but I have been doing this in the last 20 some years with little effect. What does that say? It says something is wrong. Something like US-China policy is an insult to you too.